Hello everybody, uh, this is Mr. Johnston here, and this video is intended to serve as a brief uh, recap of what happens when uh, different types of compounds dissolve. And we're going to first look at an ionic compound. So here I have a generic ionic compound. You see the alternating positive and negative ions. And I have uh, water molecules here to represent uh, the um, solvent for this situation. And what happens is these water molecules are polar. They have the oxygen side of the molecule is a little bit negative and the hydrogen side is a little bit positive. And so those water molecules, as they're moving around, they uh, have attractive force between them. Uh, that's the hydrogen bonding force. And as these water molecules are moving around, um, they end up finding attractions to these ions that are uh, in this ionic compound. And so the collective force of attraction between several water molecules and one ion is enough to pull that ion away from the ionic compound and into solution. Um, and the same thing happens with the positive ions. The collective force of attraction between multiple water molecules is enough to pull those ions away from the ionic compound and into solution. And now you can see these ions are free to move around in the solution. And so the ions are said to be dissociated. The positive has separated from the negative. In chemistry, we like to be able to label or name the forces of attraction. And so since this force of attraction is occurring between a molecule that has a dipole and an ion, we label this force of attraction an ion dipole force. And that ion dipole force is one of the types of intermolecular forces. And so um, what holds the ion in solution is the attractive force between the charged ion and the polar molecule. And so again, we can label those attractive forces. So I would also like to take a look at what happens when a polar molecule dissolves, because it's a little bit different than what happens when an ionic compound dissolves. And so here I have represented just a generic polar molecule where one side has a little bit a partial positive charge and the other side has a partial negative charge. And again, I have my water molecules uh, in the, to serve as the solvent in this case. And so what happens when a polar molecule dissolves is again we get an attraction between the uh, partial negative end of the oxygen uh, on the water molecule and the partial positive of the polar molecule. And the attractive force between uh, several water molecules and pulling those away from the attractive forces that are in the compound itself. So there would be, you know, dipole-dipole forces of attraction holding this in the solid phase, but the collective force of multiple water molecules uh, attracting the polar molecule here is enough to pull that into solution and we get new dipole-dipole force of attraction between the polar water molecule and the polar compound. And of course, there's going to be, um, you know, more than one water molecule. Some water molecules, the partial negative side of the water molecule is gonna attract the partial positive of the polar molecule. And likewise, uh, other water molecules, the partial uh, positive of the 
hydrogen side is going to attract the partial negative side and we get this dipole-dipole force of attraction holding these uh, polar water molecules in solution. Now, one thing that's different about a polar molecule when it dissolves is these charges do not separate. They are not dissociated. And so this would not have an ability to um, you know, be an electrolyte or conduct electric current because um, as this is dissolved, the molecule itself stays whole. There is no separation of the bonds and the molecule. It's all about the intermolecular forces that are able to attract and hold this molecule in solution. And so again, um, when we think about what happens when something dissolves, we really have to think about the intermolecular forces of attraction. Um, and this molecule itself, when it dissolves a polar molecule, it does not separate. 